Bojo, Manga and Deshakas, Pabaja, she and Dodam, Manga and Denoima, or Skigamami, Ma Jimskoe, Ejuan and Donjaba, or Skimade on Dam. So, my English name is Jack Hogarth. I'm an assistant professor here at Trenton University within the Cheney Wanjak School for Indigenous Studies. I'm also the chair of the Mission of Knowledge. So, Trenton is located on Treaty 20, and the Durham campus is located on the Williams Treaty. What I do is I, I separate the treaties into two different events. Um, we have uh, pre-contact treaties, so we have treaties amongst our own nations. So with uh, the Anishinaabeg, we have treaties with the Haudenosaunee, um, and that was prior to contact. Around uh, 1781 to 1923, that's when we started signing treaties with uh, the British Crown, with uh, the Canadian government, and so those are the, what we entered into were nation-to-nation -nation relationships. Treaties are still very important today because they are living documents. Um, these living documents, even prior to contact, we had uh, our treaties were through wampum belts or wampum strings. Um, those wampum belts and wampum strings are still living. They're, they're held in museums and such. Um, it's important that those come back to our people as well. With these documents that we signed with the Crown, it's uh, very important that we we acknowledge that they are still living, that we need to still enter into dialogue. Um, it talks about friendship, it talks about living amongst one another. With those treaties and the negotiations that happened, when we entered into that nation-to-nation -nation dialogue, it was understood that we were to be partners when we moved forward on this land, um, that we were supposed to be at the same level with one another, that one wasn't supposed to be below, one wasn't supposed to be above, but Rather, we're supposed to move forward together. And so it's very important that we remember that when we head into treaty week. For us, as First Nation people, we engage within these treaties, and there's certain stipulations within the treaties that we, we need to talk about because with each treaty, they're different. Um, when it comes to our engagement within these treaties, it's important that First Nation people and non-First Nation people come together to understand our responsibilities to one another. November 15th, uh, 2023 this year, uh, marks the 100th anniversary of us signing the Williams Treaty in uh, Kerb Lake, or otherwise known as Mud Lake. For us, it's, it's not a celebration. Um, for us, it's a, a time to come together and understand the events that occurred, um, the hardships that we went through. It's also important that we, we continue that reconciliation work. Um, that we, we understand the truth of those treaties, the truth of what happened to our people from the period of 1923 to 2012, that we, we understand uh, the degree of poverty that our people went through, um, the challenges that we faced. The Williams Treaty is the only treaty in all of Canada that we ever had to surrender our harvesting and fishing rights to. And so it's very important that we talk about that and enter into dialogue so that we can engage on that path of truth and reconciliation. So I strongly encourage you to engage within the treaties that you're currently residing on. Um, it's very important that you understand uh, those treaties that you are currently situated upon. Um, in addition, it's also important that you look past just the one treaty. Um, as Mississauga or as Mississauga people, we entered within 18 treaties with the Crown. So that covers all the way from Niagara Falls, all the way up until Lake Nipissing, over to Ottawa, and down into this area to Lake Ontario. So there's a, a broad spectrum of treaties that it's very important that you look towards.